Thank you so much, Moselle and the Eat to Heal family, and especially Stephanie for laying such a wonderful foundation for this book. So my name is Nakisha Ware, and I am here today uh, just to continue to lay and build a foundation for what Stephanie has set on this amazing book. She has already helped us to understand that children who experience a plant-based diet generally achieve adequate growth and development and the overall quality of their diet, their lifestyle tends to be better because they have more fruits, more vegetables. They have a diet that's higher in fiber, lower in saturated fats. So we know that many chronic conditions such as hypertension, high cholesterol, and even diabetes can begin developing even during childhood and a place plant-based diet can reduce the risk of developing these diseases. So I love the chapters that I'm going to share with you today, nine and 10, because they illustrate something that we are very familiar with, family mealtime, how it can be fun. It can have variety. It can give children independence and autonomy as a means to undergird the healthy lifestyles and the healthy connections that you'll have with your young folks and teenage children alike. So let's get into it. So chapter nine, Nourish, the definitive plant-based nutrition guide for families by Dr. Shaw and Dr. Davis. And this particular chapter is titled Feeding Plant Strong Kids. And here are some of the key points of the chapter. One, children can thrive on a plant-based diet. Yes, I know so often we might think, oh, the child has to have this and that and a bunch of milk and cheese and meat. Well, the authors today emphasize that a well-planned vegan or vegetarian diet can provide your children all the nutrients that they need to grow and develop properly, too, that meeting their nutrition needs uh, will allow them to get enough protein, iron, calcium, vitamin B12, and other key nutrients on a plant-based diet. They also discuss the benefits of some of the key plant-based foods that should be included, like legumes, nuts, and seeds. Three, the meal planning for children. They emphasize that there are some very practical tips for planning meals and snacks for children on a plant-based diet, including some suggestions they had for breakfast, lunch, dinner, and snack. They also discuss ways to make a plant-based meal appealing to kids, appetizing, such as things like including them on the meal plan and helping them to meal and allowing them to help you rather meal prep. Some special considerations they wanted to include, particularly for children of different ages. The authors discuss the unique nutritional needs of infants, toddlers, and teenagers, and they gave us the guidance in order to do that, just so we would know how to meet those needs on a plant-based diet. And what about your picky eater? They had something for them too. They suggested some strategies for encouraging even your picky eaters in ways that would help them try new foods, develop healthy eating habits, such as offering maybe a variety of options and presenting foods in a fun and exciting way. What else did they have to say? Well, let's move on to chapter 10. That chapter is titled Raising Plant Strong Teens. You heard it right here. They have unique needs as well. You can emphasize the importance of your teenager's new broadening high healthy lifestyle by getting them all the nutrients they need to support their growth and development as well. They discuss uh, using specific nutritional needs of adolescents, which could include getting enough calcium, iron, and protein. So how did they say we can help our teens transition to a plant-based lifestyle? Well, they suggested uh, supporting your teens by helping them to help them uh, with meal prep and preparation. They discuss involve, involving your teenagers in a decision-making process and addressing any concerns or questions that they might have. Now, they did touch upon addressing social pressures. They discussed social pressures that teenagers may face when trying to adopt a plant-based lifestyle. You know that that is 
uh, common sometimes when they're dealing with their peers. Sometimes they may fall to peer pressure and criticism from not just their peers and friends, but also family members. Well, they give us a couple of strategies for dealing with these just to help your teenager stay more committed to their own dietary choices. So what if you have a teen athlete? I mean, our authors didn't leave a stone unturned. They talked about the importance of a proper and nutritional regimen for athletic performance and providing your teenager with the support that a good dietary, uh, dietary need may meet in a plant-based diet. And you, most importantly you, it gives an encouraging word to all those individuals who are parents and caregivers. They wanted you to understand the support that you can get yourselves as you support your teenager, adopt and maintain a plant-based diet. They also provided guidance on how parents and caregivers can be supportive and encouraging while respecting their teenager's autonomy. Overall, we can say this. This is still the best way uh, that we have found in this particular book to address some of the things as far as a practical and comprehensive way uh, to feeding children on a plant-based based diet, helping them and encouraging their eat healthy eating habits while also supporting their nutritional needs as they develop from infancy to teenage years, while at the same time helping their teenagers face some of the challenges and pressures that they will enter as they uh, go into adulthood. So I'm really excited about this and I want you to stay tuned next week for chapter 11's review when we talk about weighty meals.